you live now to the Ontario Legislature. The question period is now underway. Let's listen okay in. to force people to pull out their credit cards to access health care in this province. Reply, Deputy Premier and Minister of Health. Thank you, Speaker. You know, we've been very clear on this side of the House. While we embrace innovation, while we want to see those exciting opportunities that will ensure our surgery backlogs and our individuals have access to critical health care in their community, uh, we're doing that. We have also been very clear that it will continue to be an OHIP funded system in the province of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. The supplementary question. Well, Speaker, she can tell that to the people who shell out hundreds of dollars for extra for cataract lenses in this province. Last week, this government had a chance to crack down on predatory fees in health care. Instead, this government voted down an NDP bill to stop for-profit clinics from charging for services people should be able to cover with OHIP. Is the Premier refusing to crack down on these predatory fees because it would foil his plans to privatize our health care system? Here, with the greatest of respect, if the member opposite has examples, then name them. Yeah. We have a process Amen. in the Ministry of Health that ensures if an individual believes they were, for any number of reasons, improperly billed, we do the investigation, we follow up, and in some cases, in some limited cases, we have gone back and, and refunded. It is very, very unusual, but we do have a process to make sure that if a person believes they were unfairly uh, charged, there is an investigation and a follow-up. Name. Well, supplementary. Well, I'd suggest you read the Auditor General's report on this, because the Auditor General has found that, in fact, her words do not correspond with the actions that's happening here in Ontario. Not only is this government refusing to crack down on upselling and additional fees in health care, the government wants even more surgeries to be going to private for-profit clinics. Why is the Premier opening the door to much bigger bills for patients and much longer wait times in pain for everyone else? Mr. Health. Speaker, I'm going to highlight a, a, a recent example. I had in Ottawa on Friday with um, Minister Fullerton and uh, MPP Goldie Gamara, where we talked about and we showed an innovation that is happening in the Champlain region, where individuals who are waiting for surgeries can have that surgery in a, in a host of, of hospitals in that community. Why? Because we see when we're matching surgeries and patients and, and hospitals, we get those surgeries done faster. That's the type of innovation that our government is investing in, and that will continue in the province of Ontario. Thank you. The next question, the member for Davenport. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. This government has taken a hatchet to farmland over the past few weeks, removing thousands of acres from the Greenbelt and destroying existing urban boundaries. Frankly, it is no surprise to find out that these changes will benefit powerful landowners like Silvio de Gasparis and Michael Rice, who have donor and political ties to the Ontario PC party. Given how suspicious this looks, Mr. Speaker, the least the government can do is be transparent about what has been happening behind closed doors. So I ask the Premier, how did the government choose which lands were going to be removed from the Green Belt? Speaker, the member opposite knows that the consultation that the government is engaged on is welcoming comments from the public. We made it very clear we were open, transparent, and honest with Ontarians when we indicated Order. that uh, at the end of the day, there would be over 2,000 acres added to the Greenbelt. The Greenbelt would be grown after this pr procedure, but at the same time, the criteria for the land that's part of that posting is very specific. It's got to be adjacent uh, to an already urbanized area. It has to have servicing uh, either on that property or very, very close to it. Order. The fact is we're in the middle of a housing crisis and that we have the opportunity to, at the end of the day, grow the green belt, but at the same time have a minimum of 50,000 new housing starts. It's a good day for Ontario yeah. speaker. Supplementary question. 
Thank you, Speaker. That kind of answer isn't going to fly for Ontarians. One of these Greenbelt properties was purchased only two months ago by Conservative donor Michael Rice. Mm. At the time of the purchase, the lands were protected Greenbelt and, at least financially, worth little. But now that they'll be open for development, Mr. Rice stands to make millions. It's all a bit curious, Mr. Speaker, so I'll give the government another chance to set the record straight. Prior to the public announcement of changes to the Greenbelt, did the Premier or the Minister or any of their current or former staff share any information about changes to the Greenbelt with owners and developers that was not already available to the public? Speaker, we made our intentions very clear with that posting. Uh, the, the information that is available for Ontarians is exactly what's on the Environmental Registry of Ontario today. You know, Speaker, again, this person, this party, this, the opposition uh, have uh, you know, a particular bent against building homes. They continuously talk about the fact that they acknowledge we need to build 1.5 million homes over the next 10 years, but every time. Every time uh, we'll, we're going to see it today, uh, after question period, when, when the time for them to stand in their place and, and look the next generation of Ontarians in the eye and say that we've got your back and that we're going to be building for you so you can realize the dream Order. of ownership. Every single solitary time, they vote against it. So I yeah. think you know, it's, a, it's pretty rich coming from that, that party opposite, the New Democratic Party, to be talking about you know, order. We've been listening to question period underway in the Ontario Legislature, focusing a lot on health care and housing. We'll have a little bit more on that throughout the morning and afternoon.